Well, good Friday morning. Glad you're here with us again today and hope you had a good week. Well, Barb and I have had a great week and uh, my back is a little bit better. I appreciate all the prayers. Appreciate all your encouragement. Still hurting, but it's been a little bit better. And uh, we, we had a good uh, uh, celebration of 54 years of marriage uh, yesterday. I took her all the way to Logan's Roadhouse so I could have a good steak and so she could say that I took her out. It wasn't very romantic, but it was good food. Anyway, we're glad you're here back here with us on Friday. And we've been looking at Joshua in chapter 8, how God used a failure in his life and how he recovered from that. And also in the life of the Israelites, because whatever was affecting Joshua was going to affect them. And you remember, just, just to uh, review the week, that uh, Joshua uh, had not listened to God. He, he went in his own strength after his greatest victory and was defeated at Ai. He didn't take the whole army, and it was just a frontal assault like he had done so many times in battle, and, and it didn't work. I mean, they were routed. And so he went before God. He sought God and basically after accusing God a little while as he asked why, he finally turned the, the spotlight on him and said, God, what can I do? And the Lord told him there was sin in the camp and he was going to have to deal with that. And so he fell down before the Lord and he worshiped the Lord. He came back home after his failure. And so we've been looking at turning our failures into, into victories again. And, uh, as I said to you, all of us have failed. The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. It means all of us have failures, but don't let the failures define you or de distract you. That's what we were talking about with Joshua early on. And the first thing he had to do was he had to deal with the sin that brought the defeat. And then secondly, he had to make absolutely sure he was following the instructions of God. Uh, in the Jericho battle, they seemed so wild and weird, but he did them anyway. And in Ai, when he finally got uh, back before the Lord after the failure, the Lord gave him a great military mover, which he could maneuver, which he could use uh, to to defeat Ai. And so he did that and had a great victory. And we learned, as we talked about yesterday, uh, to use both our failures and our victories to renew our walk with the Lord. I want to talk about just a, just a short, we'll be kind of brief today, but uh, what I want to talk about is, is the fourth thing. And not only have to deal with the sin that brought the defeat and make absolutely sure we're listening for the voice of God and listening to the instructions he gives us. And we not only use both our failures and our victories to renew our walk with the Lord as Joshua did, but here's one thing that we need before we get out of here today. We need to learn from our failures and our victories. We need to renew our dependence upon and the loyalty to the Word of God. I told you a couple of days ago, stop listening to this culture. Stop listening to the pseudo-intellectuals and the academicians who tell you one thing, or the politicians who tell you one thing, or the woke scientists who tell you something else. Folks, if it's not in the Word of God, there's a fact checker that says it may not be true, and that fact checker is God's Word. So make sure that there is a dependence upon and a loyalty to the Word of God in both victory and defeat, are you going to suffer nothing but a long line of defeat and failure? Listen to the Word. Listen to what happened to Joshua after he built the altar and after he carved the, the law of Moses, the law given to Moses on some stone tablets, and he stood before the people. And listen to what happened in verse 34. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law. 
Well, I wait a Dick. Number number eight, and number nine weren't all weren't important. He could have skipped over them like I do when I no 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 no. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law. Now listen to this: the blessings and the curses, the good and the bad. He read all of the words of the law, and listen to this, just as it is written in the book of the law. What's he talking about? He's talking about dependence upon and loyalty to the word of God. In verse 35, there was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel. Do you think they were all learning a lesson? Well, what about the kids? They were probably coloring somewhere on a, on a rock and uh, with, with chalk or, or whatever they could find to do that, and they didn't pay attention. No, 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 no. Verse 35, there was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel including the women and the children and the foreigners who lived among them. Do you understand that in Joshua's heart and mind and the people of Israel, there was no worry about offending someone by reading the word of God? Did you get that? There may have been foreigners among them. Joshua read all of the word of God. There may have been women and children who were kind of brittle like uh, snowflakes we have today, but he read the word to all of them. All of Israel heard all of the word of God. We need to renew our dependence upon and our loyalty to the word of God. Well, bless you. It's been a good week. I hope the Lord has taught you something. He's taught me something about turning our failures and our defeats into a victorious walk where God gets the glory. Bless you. Have a great weekend this weekend. Worship the Lord somewhere with somebody and praise his name for victory in the aftermath of failure. God bless you. Have a great day.